let's go to William first. Uh, not Will, but William. Um, William says, hey, Mike, trusting you had a nice long weekend. If you have time, could you please go over the technical parameters you use for your two-week out bull put credit spread strategy? Okay. So when doing bull put credit spreads, as some of you might have heard me say this before, um, I traded these, I've been trading these for several years, a few years now, about four or five, and testing alongside with this as well. And through all the testing, what I found is that when I talk about weekly bull puts, what I found through extensive testing is that going 14 days, 11 days out in time performs better across most markets than going seven days out in time or five days out in time. And part of the reason why is that you get such a small credit looking for the proper probability on a five day out trade that when you do have one trade go against you in an unexpected event, which we know will happen, suddenly the day opens up and we're down 1400 on the Dow. That happened four weeks ago. Uh, other days we can think of like that, February 26th through 28th, February 5th through the 9th of 2018, that October to November crash, the end of 2018, then November to December. But in any case, when you go to the search, William, you can specifically see exactly what we're looking for. Just scroll down, make sure you've got the weekly bull puts default screen selected, and you can see the active filters for the options and then for the technicals as well. In addition to looking for that 85% probability, uh, two strikes apart or higher, which I also found testing did better than one point strikes or less than one point apart. Looking at the technicals, what I found that worked best is naturally looking for a stock in an uptrend just above the simple moving average and looking for a MACD, where the MACD has crossed the signal line by at least three days. Okay, that's it. When I'm removing indexes and ETFs and naturally not looking for positions between now and expirations. I tried a lot of these other fancy things with all the testing as well. I tried to improve performance by using the number of days stock had crossed the SMA 20 or days over or under where the 20 had crossed the SMA 50, for example, and I attempted to use Bollinger Bands, but I found that over the same periods of testing that negated the overall results that I've seen. So we're focused on, yes, a stock in an uptrend, and the MACD signal as well. And so all the positions here, NVIDIA, Teladoc, uh, Square, FedEx, Liam Research, and so forth. Now, these are not necessarily long-term holds, but based on what we're looking at, if I go to the charts here, William, a big chart should be saved to what my needs are. There we go. So this down here is the MACD line, the blue line and the red line. And we see here that we just had a recent crossover on NVIDIA. where the blue line crossed over the red line and they're both positive and it's been moving up and that also coincided a day or two after a jump above the SMA 20 and we've exceeded the upper Bollinger Band in that case. So, but also this would have been a good time to do a bull put credit spread at this crossover when we were below the Bollinger Band and then it eventually broke, but that still would have been a good time uh, to do that in that case. Okay. So, there we go. We've got some uh, good information. That's all we're looking at in this case um, for that position there. The technicals, I should say, on the Bollinger Bands as well. Anytime you're in any search, you can scroll over down here to the bottom and look at the active filters for the position. And it shows you all of the technical indicators that we're using and all of the stock indicators that we're using as well. So for William's question, that's the technicals that are being used there for the bull put weekly spreads. We're looking at the MACD three days above crossover and at the same time looking for the stock to be above the SMA 20. That's what I found worked best with this structure for that as well. Yes, yeah, so William, it's a simple setup. I tried to keep it as simple as possible and it has been very effective for me. But of course, when... Uh, Dan, uh, okay, but of course, when I see the market turn, I won't enter the bull put credit spreads. Once the MACD goes negative on, say, SPX or SPY, where the MACD crosses below the signal line, I'll pull back on the bull put credit spreads and wait to see more of an actual bullish market condition. Um, okay, so Dan asked a question while we're on here. He says, how far do you go out on the spread? Well, that's up to you. This is what I found worked best for me, similar to what Ernie put together with the picks of the day with his testing for 
covered calls, and he put together a monthly and a weekly picks of the day, and for the naked puts as well. This structure I'm looking at with 14 days out, and Dan, honestly, I wouldn't have opened positions today. I'll typically open new bull put credit spreads if I'm with the 10 or 15 percent of my portfolio on Monday. So it's technically 11 days out in time. And yes, it says weekly because two weeks out are weeklies. But as I mentioned through my testing, what I found is that going 14 days out in time and getting net credits of 35, 40 cents, 35 cents on two point spreads or two and a half point spreads performed better than over time. I mean, you could look at a six month window and say, oh, the weeklies had a 97% success rate you know, going five days out in time with an average of an 11% return or 10% return, that's hard to beat. And, and you're right, this might not have beaten it. But the minute you take losses, and you will, because this can snap against you very quickly, as I mentioned earlier, with those special events that just happen and the market opens down 4 or 5%, these spreads are going to be near 30 40% loss. And to avoid further losses, you do want to close them at a certain point and get out of the position. You don't want to try to manage it. You want to get out of the way of the freight train so you don't risk taking a 100% loss, which is going to be very hard to recover from with this structure, any structure in the bull put credit spreads, actually. So where I'm going with that is that on a weekly, I might only get $0.18. Cents. It'll be more than double, you know, or more than half of what I'm seeing here on the two-week out. That's just the way options are structured. But if I have a two-and-a-half-point spread and I take in $0.18, cents, the stock suddenly goes against me and I lose $1.80, I've just wiped out 10 previous trades. If I take in 34 cents and the stock falls between the strike prices and I take a $1.20 or $1.25 loss, I've only wiped out four previous trades because I've taken in 34 cents instead of 18. Plus, I'm also likely further out of the money two weeks out of time so I can sustain, sustain more of a fall in the price. So I call these weeklies because they are weeklies by definition but I'm looking two weeks out because I found through testing that seems to perform better than trying to force it five days out as well into that position. Okay. All right. Okay. So that was for Dan. Quick comment in there. Now, all of this might have uh, might have probably taken Will S's question first. Uh, might have alleviated some of the confusion for those of you that are just getting started with vertical spreads and bull puts. But Will S says, question on the credit spread. Given that the credit spread has a defined max profit and max risk at expiration, during the lifetime of the spread before expiration, is it possible to have an intermediate liquidation value that is greater than the max profit or less than the max risk? You'll probably have a liquidation that's less than the max risk if the stock starts to move against you. Uh, for example, what's one of mine? HDS. Let me check something real quick here. HDS chain, I think it dropped 70 cents. Oh, it's only dropped 10 cents today, but I think a while ago it was up at 33 or 34. So let me see. Just I'm just going to check. Um, June 28th, I guess. Let's try June 28th or June 26th. Okay. Well, this doesn't offer weekly, so that's going to be a little bit easy too. All right, 33.06, it was down 78. Let's go the previous day. Perfect. Previous day. Stock is at 33.84. Bullish on the stock. I look out July 17th for my puts. Let's go to puts only. I don't have single strike differences. That's fine. That's fine. So I'm going to sell. I'm talking about on June 25th here. Well, on June 25th, I'm going to go ahead and sell the 32.50 strike put. Doesn't have a great probability. This wouldn't be a position I would have entered. It's only at 64.3. I would have opened the 30 with an 86% probability. But we're going to use this as an example. 3250, eh, midpoint of 94 cents, pretty easy. And then, of course, here we're going to be looking at buying the 30 to complete the bull put spread with a midpoint of about 29 cents. That's on June 25th. Okay, now I'm going to enter this into the portfolio real quick. So let's go to my portfolio. We'll keep it in the same one we entered that CMG position in uh, for Octavio's first question. And we'll go to a bull put credit spread entry. And let's see, the buy put is first on HDS. All right, so we're going to buy the 30 
we're going to sell the July 32 and a half. Now we're not at expiration yet, I understand, and that's that's good. That goes along with Will's question. And this was 625. And remember, my price is here 0 0.98. Was it 98? No, 94. I'm sorry, that was the ask. 94 midpoint for selling to open our 3250 put. 29 for buying to open the July 30th. Now, I'm going to put a position name on this too. We're going to call it HDS bull put. This is a new feature where you can track analysis by position or by symbol. So any positions on HDS I did, I can evaluate together as a total gain and loss. But now you can be able to put in a description and you can also look at the analysis by individual spread or covered call on an underlying stock instead of seeing them all together. Okay, so why did I go through this whole thing? Well, the stock is at 3287. It's still above the 3250 put, but oh, I am at a profit. Okay, so we are at a profit here that's not above the full profit for the position. Okay, it's not above the full profit there, but I could liquidate now with a total gain of $13. So my liquidation value is 53. We took in 65 initially. And uh, <clears throat> then I'd have the position there with still a return, but not really that high. The, the, the true answer is, is that during the time of the spread, Will, if the stock falls between the strike prices, you'll be at a loss. But you won't be at the maximum loss for the position. So if my max loss was 250 between the strike prices, and the stock falls, let's say the stock fell to 32, my liquidation loss might be a dollar or a dollar 10, but it's not gonna be more than the maximum risk. I've never seen a spread where you've hit a point where you can lose more on the position in that case than the initial maximum risk. And very rarely have I ever seen any structure where you can liquidate beforehand in a spread position, any combination that has a capped gain or a capped loss. You know, think of a call or spread or a covered call or something along those lines. But rarely would you ever see a position where you can close it before expiration and receive more than the maximum profit. Okay, and that's what this curved red line, by the way, is showing you. What's this curved red line? The curved red line on the profit and loss chart, oh, sorry, is the halfway point between now and expiration because time value is still going to remain on both options. So even if the stock went up to $34 here prior to expiration, and this is July 17th, but you know, let's say on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm still not going to be at full profit and I would never expect to be above the maximum profit in this case for liquidating the position. One way. And uh, Sam might, might comment on this from his experience with trading options and different things. In a spread where you have a max gain and a max loss already set, as we do here with a bull put or any type of vertical spread, the only way that I might see a gain higher than expected is if I open, let's say, a slightly out of the money bull call debit spread. Let's take a look. Uh, I'll go seven days out as an example. So meaning, I'm doing a similar strategy, but I'm going to buy a 3250 call and sell a 35. And this is an out of money spread, bull call debit, that's speculative because the max profit is speculative that it will go above 35. And when it goes above 35, I get my max profit of 170 because I'll get 250 back from the spread, right? When it's above 35 at expiration, my broker will buy shares of stock at 3250, exercising the long to deliver the short obligation at 35. I get 250 back, but I paid a debit of 80. So my profit's 170 or double what I paid to get into the position, more than double as well. Now, one thing that might happen in a bull call debit such as this or a bear put debit, which would be the reverse direction, is if something happens and the stock spikes up near the short strike price, it hasn't gone above the short strike price, the short is still out of the money, but for some reason the implied volatility of the double, of the long doubles. Some event happens 
and the implied volatility doubles. Now it's probably also going to double on the short. What happens to one option on a given stock in the same expiration has to typically happen to the other. There might be some subtle difference there if it's still out of the money. This volatility might spike faster as it's in the money as opposed to this one that's slightly out of the money. Then maybe because just of an implied volatility flux, you might see an opportunity to close this at higher than the maximum profit, liquidating the position for maybe a 175 or 180 profit. I have not personally come across that in any of my spreads, debit or credit, but I think it might be a possibility as well. In general, when you have any structure that has a known risk to the downside, a known max profit to the upside, any time between now and the expiration date, it is unlikely that you're going to get filled at lower than the maximum loss or get into a position where you're exercised out for lower than the maximum loss or be able to liquidate for more than the higher return. And Will, no, I am not referring to volatility skew in that case. That's not exactly what I was referring to at all. I was talking about me being in a position for 10 days and an event happening where the market suddenly turns or there's some unexpected news and the implied volatilities for both options spike up. That's not skew or smile or anything like that. That's just a chance that maybe I got into this at a lower implied volatility. 10 days later, the volatility spiked from a market event and I could get out of the long for more than I expected. That's it. I'm not talking about volatility skew or anything along those lines at all in that case. Okay, just talking about a change in volatility as well.